Hi guys, welcome back to Wentworth Life, the YouTube channel that talks all things Wentworth. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if this is your first time here. All my social media links are posted underneath this video. And if you stick around until the end of the video, I will be responding to some of your comments from my previous videos. Right then guys, I am so excited to make this video because we've had a couple of Wentworth leaks over the last 24 hours that I want to talk about. This includes six new photos and a video clip. Not only that, but I've been digging around and found some more info on the first episode that's going to be airing on the 24th of August. I've also got a huge theory about a certain character's death scene that we've got coming up. And not only that, but one of my friends sent me over a voice note about how Ferguson's storyline might possibly end. And I'm not lying guys, when I listened to it, it actually gave me goosebumps and it could actually happen. So we've got lots to talk about in today's video. But before we get started, I just wanted to share some news that there is a Wentworth book being released on October the 13th and it's called Wentworth The Final Sentence on File and it's going to include never released behind the scenes stories from our favourite cast members. Not only that, but it says that it's going to reveal never released backstories. So I'm wondering whether that means that we're going to be learning about some certain backstories on characters who haven't had them in the current series. So if this is true then I am very excited to read this book. It's currently an ebook, so I'm not sure if there are any plans on it being released on a proper hardback, but I really hope they do because I would 100% buy that today. But the ebook is currently available to pre-order. I have just pre-ordered mine and I will leave a link underneath this video for you all to do the same. All you need to do is click on the link, choose your country and then pre-order by following the instructions. Right then, let's talk about that video clip that got leaked last night just before I went to bed. The clip I'm talking about is the one where Ferguson is in the yard and goes to stab Mr. Jackson. Now of course we have seen these little snippets in the trailer but this is the actual full scene. Now I'm not going to post the clip on this YouTube channel for copyright reasons but if you haven't seen the clip I will once again leave a direct link underneath this video so you can go and watch it. But what the video did reveal is that this is actually a dream sequence. It's confirmed it is a dream sequence. Well, it's more of a daydream that Ferguson is having in the yard. So well done to everyone who realised that it was a dream before I did, because I didn't guess it straight away. So well done to everyone who did. Now, when I watched this last night, I was quite shocked to see how evil Ferguson's eyes went. Her eyes went all deadly demon before she runs at Will. Just as Ferguson runs at Will, we hear Jake in the background calling Ferguson. But Ferguson doesn't snap out of the daydream at this point. Ferguson then stabs Will, but then Joan does actually snap out of it after Jake calls her by the name Maxwell, which is quite interesting. So I'm wondering now whether if Joan is actually going to have both characters of Kath and Ferguson inside her. I'm not 100% sure if Joan is fully back to her normal self. I mean, she had all her flashbacks back at the end of season 8 part 1, but does that really mean that she is fully aware of what these mean. I do have a feeling that Evil Joan is 100% back, don't get me wrong, but I am wondering whether that when the season begins, will Ferguson be able to figure out what these memories mean? Maybe at first she won't, but then something will finally click in her brain a few episodes into the season. Who knows, but it's definitely going to be fabulous viewing. Also, did you all notice the song that was playing in this scene? The lyrics start off saying, One step ahead with you. And I think this must confirm that the episode title is indeed called One Step Ahead. Now originally the first episode as we all thought was going to be called Rogue. But of course remember back in June when I found those German TV articles that revealed a little bit too much about episode 1 and episode 2. Well that was when we first saw the title One Step Ahead and episode 2 is called Funeral Mass. Now I know everyone was keeping an open mind about this because I know on some websites online they still have the original titles rogue 
But I think after watching this clip with the song One Step Ahead, I'm strongly thinking now that the German article is correct and the first episode is called One Step Ahead. And of course, if this is correct, then the second episode should be called Funeral Mass. The tragic thing about this though is that seeing as the German article seems to be correct about everything so far, then the early spoiler that they gave us about Reb's death is probably true. I mean, I have always been 99.9% .9 certain that this was always going to be true, but I think after watching this clip last night, I'm pretty much even more convinced now that the German article that we all read back in June was all 100% true. Now, speaking of German articles, last night I was thinking to myself, I wonder if there has been any more news on these TV German articles. So I did some digging, and I found some more info on the first episode. Now, of course, these articles are all in German, so I had to use Google Translate to read them in English, and some of the translated isn't correctly spelt in certain parts, but it's easy enough to read and it does give us some insight into one or two things, so let's take a look. The inmates of Wentworth are eagerly awaiting the return of Ali. This, or rather, she survived the brutal attack by Judy in the showers. After Ali's return from the hospital, their friends, or as in Ali's friends, are shocked to discover that Ali has suffered severe damage and is now dependent on a wheelchair. Ali names Boomer as the new top dog in Wentworth, which Lou doesn't like at all. She is now ready to fight for the post of Lee. Leader. In Wentworth, however, it is not only the tensions among the inmates that are causing the air to be thick inside, but also among the guards, because Anne Reynolds' crackdown on Wentworth brings resentment on all fronts. For Joan Ferguson, who finally recovered all her memories after a mental breakdown, nothing less than the future is at stake, because the end of their, or rather, because the end of her process and her last hope for a life in freedom is getting closer. So as you can see, See, the translation wasn't spot on when it comes to the hers or the she's, but we can make it out. Now some of this has been revealed in other articles and I've covered a lot of this in my older videos, but what I found interesting in this read through is the fact that Lou is not happy about Boomer being named the new top dog. Now do you remember in older videos when I had a theory that maybe Anne Reynolds was going to force Lou to become top dog in order for Reb to have his treatment? Well now I have totally changed my mind. After reading this, I reckon Lou will want to become top dog just to spite Boomer. I don't know what it is with Boomer and Lou, but these two have got so much beef with each other. And I reckon this is why Boomer and Lou will end up having that fight in the laundry. I have a feeling that Lou will beat Boomer, and Lou will become top dog just as Rita comes back into the prison. Well, that's just my theory anyway. But I thought it was interesting to see that Lou is actually going to be really pissed off when Ali names Boomer as the new top dog. Right then, guys, let's talk about these photos. Now, I received I received these the other day and I sent them over to Michelle because I knew Michelle would be so excited and I've had a few days to have a think about what's going on in these photos. So let's start with this one. So we have Ali coming back into Wentworth and of course as we've all known for a long time now Ali is indeed in a wheelchair. She's being brought in by Mr Jackson and all of the women are greeting her and Boomer is bending down to give Ali a hug. We can also see Ruby there too. I think this might be the moment where everyone is going to realize that Ali cannot be top dog anymore and this is when Ali will put Boomer in charge which of course as we've all just learned this is going to piss off Lou Kelly. In this next photo we see Rita still on the outside sitting in a chair and on the phone to someone so I think this will be Rita visiting her dying dad and then maybe this is Rita on the phone to Ruby because if I remember correctly Ruby does have Rita on a call list but she is using a different name I think maybe it was a like auntie something, I can't really remember now, but maybe the cops will put a trace on Ruby's phone calls at this stage, and then the police will come for Rita. I'm kind of glad that we're going to see Rita on the outside visiting her dying dad, and seeing Rita get caught, rather than just having Rita come back into Wentworth straight away. I definitely think that when the cops close in on Rita, Rita might jump on her bike, and there will be a bit of a chase scene before she's recaptured. A great theory that someone said 
sent me yesterday is that maybe we are going to see Rita visit her dying dad and then in a twist we see Rita and her dad having a conversation where it will be revealed that Rita is actually Ruby's mum. Now this could actually be a plausible storyline and I know a lot of people have kicked this idea around for a few years as there does seem to be a big age gap between the two characters so you never know this could happen. In this next photo we have Ferguson in her kitchen uniform and she's looking a little menacing in this photo. I reckon she is probably talking with Dr. Miller in his office and she's trying not to let her mask slip. Other than that this photo doesn't give too much away. Now moving on to this next photo we have Sheila and Mari together in a scene and Sheila isn't looking happy. I don't know whether if she is angry or upset but she definitely looks like she has been crying and it looks like an intense scene. Maybe she Sheila is starting to lose it, I don't know. Maybe Sheila and Mari are planning on trying to get rid of Lou as they both think that Lou has too much of a hold on Reb and this is maybe why the scene is looking quite intense. In this next photo we have Mari looking into someone's cell looking completely broken. Now I think this is taken from this particular scene that we saw in the trailer of Mari looking into Reb's cell, turning around and looking horrified about something. So I think this photo is from the moment Mari learns of Reb's death but I actually have a bigger theory on how this is all going to pan out which I'm going to talk about in just a moment but before I do we do have another photo where we see Joan pushing the panic button in her unit now I think this is all going to tie in with Reb's death scene and after watching stuff in the trailer and after seeing these photos I came up with a theory on how Reb might die because a lot of these scenes and photos they seem very confusing like why does Mari look into the cell one moment but then in another scene Mari has disappeared and Jake is outside the door with Linda running to take a look but the door is still closed so this has got me thinking okay so here is my Reb Keen death theory Michelle if you're watching get yourself ready <laughs> so I think this scene with the powder going into the mugs I think this is Sheila and Mari working together as we do see Mari watching in the distance now I don't think this powder is actually poison, I reckon it's drugs. Drugs that is going to make Lou lucid and sleepy so that when Sheila and Mari do go to try and finish Lou off, Lou won't be able to fight back. Now I don't reckon Mari is actually going to get her hands dirty, I reckon Sheila will be the one who will try and kill Lou and Mari will just keep watch. But in the trailer it looks like that the drugs are being poured into two mugs. So I have a feeling that Sheila is going to put this drug into Reb and Lou's drink just to make sure that Lou does drink it. Now don't forget I don't think this drug is going to kill anyone, I think it's just going to be used as a, as a weapon to try and slow Lou down. But in order to make sure that Lou drinks the right drink, Reb will have to be drugged too. Don't forget they probably will only get one chance at this and because Reb is always at Lou's side, maybe they will need to drug Reb and make him sleepy to keep him out of the way. So Sheila and Mari are going to drug both Lou and Reb's drinks. What I think will then happen is we will see Lou and Reb pick up their drinks and they will walk off back to their unit and Sheila and Mari will think that they are drinking their drinks but just as Lou and Reb are walking back to their units, Lou will be called to Anne Reynolds' office by Linda Miles. And Lou will be like, ah, oh, can't I just finish my coffee first? But Linda will take Lou's drink and tip it away and then drag Lou to Anne's office. Lou will then tell Reb that she will meet him back in the unit. So Reb goes back to his unit and drinks his drink. Just as Sheila is about to head over to the unit, Sheila gets stopped for a random piss test. So Reb is alone in the unit, or so he thinks. Reb is starting to get sleepy and his vision is starting to go blurry. Then out comes Ferguson from the cell next door. And Ferguson has this spoon with the string, which is what we saw in the trailer. Now I reckon Ferguson wants to teach Lou Kelly a lesson and the best way of doing that is to hurt Reb. Ferguson looks into Reb's cell and sees a sleepy Reb Keen. And just before Ferguson pulls the handle to enter the cell, Ferguson will hear someone come in. 
Ferguson will then run back into her cell and hide. Then in runs Judy Bryant, armed with a shiv. Judy will briefly check the unit to make sure that nobody is there. And then Judy will enter Reb's cell and will start stabbing him over and over again, multiple times in a vicious, brutal attack. At this point, Reb is so drugged up he can't even try and fight back. Judy will then throw Reb onto the floor and Reb is on his back looking up covered in blood, looking up at Judy with tears in his eyes. Judy will remember that Ali survived the last stabbing so Judy needs to be sure that Reb is dead, especially because Reb is now looking at Judy. So Judy bends down, looks into Reb's eyes and says, This will teach your bitch lover not to mess with me. And then Judy will slice Reb's throat, instantly killing him. Judy will then leave Reb's cell and close the door and make a run for it. But Judy hasn't realised that Ferguson has just listened to the whole thing. Then in walks Lou Kelly, who goes into Reb's cell and finds Reb's dead body. And Lou lets out an almighty horrifying scream. Lou closes the cell door and starts cradling her lover's dead body and is screaming and howling at the top of her voice. Mari then comes into the unit and hears the screaming and locks into the cell. Mari opens the door but Lou turns around and screams at Mari to get out. Lou then barricades herself in there with Reb, promising that nobody is going to take her lover's dead body away from her. Ferguson at this point will then push the panic button and this is when Jake and Linda will look into the cell and see Lou holding Reb's dead body, but they can't get in because Lou has barricaded the door. We will then have a totally broken Lou Kelly who will eventually let the officers in, but at this stage the officers take Lou thinking that she might have had something to do with this. This is when I think the crime scene crew will arrive, followed by Reb's dead body being taken away. I then think we will get one of those spine tingling moments when Wentworth plays some sad and intense background music and we will have Judy smiling to herself in her own unit followed by Ferguson then smiling at herself in her unit because she now knows who the real Judy Bryant is and then we will see a broken Lou Kelly in the slot alone crying out for her lover. So guys, what did you think of this theory? Please let me know your thoughts. I think something like this could happen because it will explain why Mari gets lynched by some of the women. And it explains as to why Mari and the officers are on the outside of the cell door and they're not actually in the cell trying to revive Reb. If this does happen, Mari will feel incredible guilt, and Mari will, will probably think that it was Sheila that did it, but won't be able to tell anyone because she will dob herself in. Lou will then go on the rampage to find out who killed Reb, and it's going to be intense. But let me know what you thought of my theory, and also let me know how do you think Reb is going to die. Now, sticking with theories for a moment, my friend Sean sent me over a voice note this morning, telling me about a theory that he came up with on how Ferguson's story could end in the final episodes. And I just have to share this with you guys as I haven't heard this theory anywhere else. So, Sean says... What if, in the final episode, Ferguson finally starts to lose her mind completely and she starts to have B flashbacks, specifically to when Joan stabbed B to death? Ferguson replays this very moment over and over again in her head and she actually starts to reenact killing B by picking up a knife in the kitchen, thinking that she is about to kill B all over again. But then, all of a sudden, when Ferguson snaps out of this hallucination, she looks down and realises that she has actually just stabbed herself a dozen times in the stomach, falls to the floor, and Joan essentially ends up killing herself, thinking that she is killing B. Now, when I first heard this this morning, I was like, wow, it literally gave me goosebumps when I was listening to it. This could be a very plausible end to Joan's storyline. We could even get B looking down at Ferguson just as she's dying on the floor, with B 
saying I win all over again before disappearing. This is an amazing theory. I just want to thank Sean for sharing this with me today. It's definitely a lot better than just being squished by a train, for example. But guys, what did you think of this theory? Are you a fan or did you think it was a bit meh? Let me know what you guys think. There's no wrong or right answers as we all have our own opinions and I value all of yours. But please let me know your thoughts because personally I thought this was an outstanding theory. Just before I jump into comment replies, I just wanted to share this beautiful artwork that was sent over to me. It was created by Jordan Finn who has an amazing Instagram account and Jordan is a self-taught character based artist and my god some of the creations are outstanding. I just wanted to say thank you to Jordan for sending this over to me and guys if you want to see some more of this amazing artwork then I will leave a link directly to Jordan's Instagram account. Right then guys on that note let's move on to some comments replies. So we have It's Blood. You should do a went with the Fall Girl review. It would be such a good video. Well, It's Blood, I haven't had the chance to listen to it yet. I have actually got myself like a 30 day free trial, but I just, I've been so, so busy. Not only with YouTube, I've got like a lot going on in my life. We've just found out that we've bought a new house. We've been accepted for it. So I'm just so, so busy, but I will try and get to listen to this. And then obviously I will try and do a review. I did actually hear Michelle's review the other day and it sounds amazing. So I will try and get round to this. Thank you for your comment, it's blood. And we have Kali Kokit 101 I hope I pronounced that correctly. Fun fact, 24th of August, when season 9 starts, it's also John Ferguson's birthday. You see it when Will is looking at her file in the season final in season 8. Yes! Uh, I saw this online actually, uh, god it must have been a couple of weeks ago, but yeah, that is so true, the final season does begin on John Ferguson's birthday, uh, not only that, it's also Michelle's birthday as well, and I know Michelle is super excited, is there anyone else who watches these videos whose birthday falls on the 24th of August, let me know in the comments box, but yes, that's a great fun fact, thank you for your comment. And we have Macy Velotta. Here's another comment lol, but do you think there's a chance Maxine could come back somehow? Even if it's just through a letter to Boomer, it would be nice to know how she's doing, I loved her character. Yes Macy, I, I would love her to come back as well, I would love there just to be one more appearance of Maxine, but I'm with you, even a letter to Boomer would just be, would, would satisfy me. There's a lot going on in this final season, so we'll just have to wait and see, but Macy, thank you for your comment. And we have Russ crone sir that is 100 ruby getting thrown in the water at the end of the trailer not skinny or tall enough to be judy yes russ i'm i'm actually finding myself leaning towards conf like agreeing with you because i've watched it over and over again and it does kind of look like ruby's statue not only that it's somebody in the dressing gown and i'm pretty sure i've seen ruby wearing that dressing gown i just hope that whoever's being dunked in this water isn't the women killing someone they're just trying to like torture somebody rather than kill them i mean torture is bad enough don't get me wrong but i'm really hoping this isn't a death for a certain character and it's more of a torture scene but we'll just have to wait and see but you might be right on this one it could be ruby but thank you for your comment and thank you all for your amazing comments you've all been fantastic as usual send me over your theories so keep those comments coming guys because i read every single one of them okay guys well that's all i have for you today thank you all for sticking around until the end of the video make sure you smash that subscribe button stay safe out there and i will see you all again very soon